Hey guys, Laura Whitmore here with Strategic Test Prep. Have you ever been stuck on a math problem before? I think we all have. Even I get stuck sometimes and I do test prep for a living. So today I'm gonna cover some key guessing strategies you can use on the math sections to pick up extra points. Now, before we get into the strategies, it's important you understand the layout of the math sections. So section three is 20 questions and 25 minutes. Now, what happens on section three is you work through the multiple choice, the difficulty level increases. So when you start with number one, that's an easy, and then it works its way up to number 15 with the last handful of problems being difficult. Everything in between, obviously, is a medium. Now, when you get to the five fill-ins at the end, number 16 through 20, the difficulty level is randomized. They're in no particular order. You'll have some easies, mediums, and difficult sprinkled in. And then on section four, it's relatively the same. Section four is just a longer section. It's uh, 38 questions in 55 minutes. And the difficulty level increases as you go through the multiple choice up to number 30. And then it resets and there are eight fill-ins. The main differences between section three and section four is section three, you can't use a calculator. Section four, you can. So section three has more abstract questions about math concepts, whereas section four is more practical. So it's like applied mathematics, for instance, figuring out how many people should go into tents on a camping trip, figuring out how many pizzas to buy for a certain amount of money. That's section four. So section four has more word problems. So if you understand the layout, you'll have a better opportunity to use these strategies when appropriate with guessing. Chances are you'll use them towards the end of the section when the problems get more difficult. If you miss one of the easy questions on the first page of either section, you probably made a careless mistake or you were rushing or you misread the question. So keep that in mind. Now let's talk about different types of questions and what guessing strategies you would use. So on this problem, as you can see, it's a number eight. All of the answer choices are different. So there's different characteristics where you can start to whittle down what did certain questions have in common and what don't. So think of yourself like on a, a kid's show like Sesame Street or something where you're trying to figure out which one doesn't belong. So if I have a carrot, um, an orange, a celery stalk, and a broccoli, which one wouldn't belong in that group? Obviously the orange because the orange is a fruit. So you're doing the same thing here. So when I look at these four answer choices, I'm wondering, well, which one doesn't belong? And another way you can approach it is figuring out, well, which ones do look like they belong the most. And so in this case, C and D look so similar. Now A has a numerator of one and I don't see that anywhere else. So A is an oddball I would get rid of first. And then B is a binomial, but it doesn't have something factored out like C and D and the numerator. So I would get rid of B second. So you have it down to C and D. And notice that D has an X plus three, just like B does. So that's more similar to another answer choice. The minus is an oddball. I would get rid of C and pick D. The answer to number eight was D. So if you're desperate, you can use majority rules to get it down to the right answer. Now, you might, especially on section four, have more word problem situations where your answer choices are integers, as you can see in this number 10. You can't use majority rules here. They're just numbers, so there's no identifying um, characteristics that you can start to eliminate. However, if you have to guess, guess strategically. So if I have a range of numbers, I'm going to go with one of the middle numbers that are close together. 240 is an outlier, and 70 also is on the other end of the spectrum, so it's probably 140 or 120. At least you have a 50-50 shot when you guess here instead of a 25% chance shot. So on this one, I would just go with um, C, okay? The last thing that is another guessing strategy deals with the fill-ins. Now, the fill-ins, you don't have any multiple choice, so your hands are kind of tied, but after doing this over the years, what I've learned is that the number three, for some weird reason, comes up more than any other answer choice on the fill-ins. So if you have no idea, just put down the number three. You don't want to leave anything blank. Yes, it's a shot in the dark, but at least it gives yourself a chance of picking up an extra point. I had a student who was trying to get a scholarship to play football in college, and at the time the NCAA rules were to get, uh, you had to get at least a thousand to play collegiate sports. 
And he ended up putting number three down on uh, number 20, which was the hardest from section three, and he got the point. So he just got a thousand to be able to play the sport. So I promise you the strategy works and more often than not, three comes up at least once as an answer on each test. All right, so those are the three guessing strategy tips I have for you as you work through the math. Remember to stay calm and don't panic. Everybody gets stuck on math problems. It's so normal. It's just how you handle it that's important.